we are still committed to deliver the first milking by December 2024. Our activities now is EIA, so I think our timeline is also subject to EIA approval. So we are working very closely with the state agencies to ensure that our EIA, all the information that are needed have been compiled, have been submitted so that they can also facilitate fast approval. So once that is done, I think we will then be able to uh, be very clearly to say what sort of timeline we are looking at. And meanwhile, we have already completed our tender for uh, land clearance. So whenever EIA is approved, I think land clearance project for, uh, work can start. We are also now in the process of final uh, finalizations of the investment plan and uh, to appoint a strategic partner, international strategic partner, as well as looking at the details of phasing and when do we bring in the cows. So those are the things that's going now. Well, the mill will come uh, 2025. So it will come in phases. Uh, so our plan, if you uh, look at our plans, I think last time I mentioned that we will start with about uh, um, 20 million liters. There's about 5 million liters per quarter, and then move on to 10 million liters per quarter, and then 15, 20 million liters, 25 million liters per quarter. So that will be for phase one. The phase one is potentially will be able to produce about 100 million liters of fresh milk per year. Yeah, how many percent of that against current fresh milk? There is many times of current fresh milk of FNM. Yeah. So we need to grow this market and uh, replace a lot of the recombined milk in Malaysia into fresh milk. Uh, Oral Malaysia, aluminum fresh milk. If you look at our last two, last year's uh, third and fourth quarter uh, financial numbers, you see that it was hovering quite stable, right? So at that time, if you remember, uh, if you cover our stock for, for, for last year as well, you will remember that we say that we're learning, we're just uh, beginning to impose some price increase and we had some volume intact and all that. So all that, I believe that has been digested today in Thailand, for example. So Q3, like, like what uh, Mr. Tiong mentioned, uh, in the second half of the year, we should be seeing improvement in Thailand, right? So for Malaysia, it's, Malaysia is a, today we are playing two games in Malaysia. The first game is called volume drive. Number two is called brand development. So these are the two things that we are doing concurrently. So when you spend money on brands building, it will add to your cost. But if you hope if those brand investments drive sales, bring in more revenue, then even though the margin is lower, but the overall profit should go up. So I think that is something that we hope. And Coco Land, uh, we have learned first half of the year, now we are in the second half, we are effectively going to be putting all that we have learned in first half into Coco Land. And we can also expect that Coco Land performance should do better, at least on paper. Uh, because first half we also have some approval that because of financial accounting practice, we have made some additional approval to be in line with uh, FNN's uh, accounting practices. Well, export. Second half, second half normally export is not the highest, uh, but I think we should be shouldn't be should be no worse than last year. Yeah, so I guess that's probably uh, you can put a sum of all parts together, and second half, yeah, hopefully, it's it's, it's also no worse than uh, last year.